Welcome everyone, this is the third episode of the Rust tutorial series and today we'll cover a super important topic which is data types. In the previous episodes we saw hello world and variables, today we'll talk about really the basics. What are data types, what kind of data types we have, just a couple of examples and we'll be done. Just a kind of reminder that Rust is a statically typed language and compiled one of course. It needs to know all the types of all the variables at compile time, otherwise it will throw an error. The compiler can usually infer the type, can imagine the type and adding this for you. For example, if you initialize a variable like let x equal 10, it will understand that it's an integer. Data types in Rust. What kind of data types we have? Scalar types, and we'll see four types, integers, floating point numbers, booleans, characters. Those are the four basic scalar types in Rust. Then we have compound types. They have multiple variables in the same type. As a compound types, we have tuples and arrays. Custom types, we'll see two types of custom types, the most important ones, structs and the nouns. Let's talk about uh, the integers. So very simple, but we need to understand what kind of integers we have, uh, how they are uh, defined and so on. We have many different types uh, of integers in Rust. We have signed and unsigned, of course with a sign and if we want them to be just positive, you can see here in length 8 bit, 16, 32, 64, 128 bits, we have signed and unsigned. We have also this one we will not see in this video, but it's interesting, which is dependent of or the architecture here, arch. For example, we can define one as a small number, then we can have a big number, I think this is a bit too big, big number unsigned, we can have a small number as an integer, it can also be a negative, a bigger one also negative, print, print ln small number, big number, we are using string interpolation, print small number, okay. I want to name this in a different way, the rest can be confusing, so small number two and big number two, I need to add this here. We can do cargo run with the option dash q, we just have the output here. About integer literals, so if we usually we use the decimal types when, when we want to define a number, but let's say that we want to use a different numeral system. We can have decimal, hexadecimal, octal, binary and byte. Let decimal, which is the default one, decimal, we can have a number like this, an hexadecimal one, octal one, binary and byte. Let's print them all here with hexadecimal, x, octal, binary and byte. Cargo run dash q and we can see here we have the representation in decimal of the relative integer literal. For example, the hexadecimal one 0xff becomes 255, of course in decimal, when we will print out. The floating points, we have F64 and F32. F64 is the default one and it's a double precision float, the 32 is a single precision float. So in Rust the default one is the F64. This is, you see, here this is the default. Or we can have also this, we can declare the type of course if we don't want the default one. So this would be an F64 because that's the default one. Otherwise this, this can be inferred as a type. In this case we'll have F32. We can print them out. Basic operations, nothing much to say here, some difference product and quotient. Also reminder, we can print the sum, difference, product, quotient and reminder. Let's see. Control L, cargo run. We have two and three and this is printed without the command here. Sum, difference, product, quotient and reminder. The boolean type is represented as a false or true. It's a one byte in size and as I said, it can only take two values, true and false. We'll also see something interesting here that is not common to all the programming languages. Of course, booleans are used usually in 
conditional statement, we can have this let t equal to true. This is an implicit declaration. You can see I didn't say that this was a bool, but since I assigned a value as true, the compiler understands that this is a boolean. Otherwise, so I can do an explicit declaration here, let f bool equal to false, and this is an explicit declaration. I can print them like this, and then I can try here to use it in an if statement. If t print t is true, else print t is false. Let's try cargo run dash q, t true f false, t is true, perfect. We can have a let not t, which is t with an exclamation mark, and if we print it, we see that here not t is false because t was true. If we change it here to false and we run this again, we see this not true equal true, <laughs> doesn't make sense, but it's okay, and t equal false. Is there a default value assigned to a boolean? So if I say let b bool, will Rust like this or not? Maybe there is a default uh, true or false uh, value assigned to a boolean, like is there is in uh, some other languages. What do you think that will be the output here if I print this statement? Do you think this will uh, return a true, false or error? Cargo run dash q. Bam, error. Binding, let's see, binding declared, declared here, but left un uninitialized. You see here there is a red arrow here, <laughs> actually, used here, but it isn't initialized. No, there is error originized in the macro. The cargo compiler is literally trying to suggest us what to do. You see, equal, false, all green with all these pluses. I love it. It's like explaining th things uh, to a child, like you have just to put this like this. You see, we have exactly how this we should look like. Let's try to initialize as a false, and now it's working. They have to be initialized, otherwise we'll have an error, and similar to other types, of course. A char type is a four bytes in size, and it's used to represent a single Unicode scalar value. This means that you can you can encode a lot of things. We have four bytes. We can we have no idea how many types we can put it here. It can represent many different characters. For example, let's see equal z. We can also put this x equal the big x, the Twitter x one, or we can even put emojis as a single character. For example, this uh, heart hide cut. We can print all of them. Cargo run, we can see Z, the X of Twitter, and also this heart eyed cut. We can also iterate over characters in a string. For example, for char ciao, namaste, if I'm not wrong, pray. Let's see if this does work. Okay, now let's see tuples. In Rust, a tuple is a versatile way to group together a different number of values. I want to start from this example, but I want to change this just a little bit. I want to use i32, f64, and char, and here instead of one, I, can, I want to put uh, x with a single quote. We have this fixed length, and this cannot change. We cannot change the structure of uh, a tuple. We can the structure a tuple into individual variables. For example, here we can have let x, y, z equal tup, and then we can print. Print ln, the value of y is y. And here we should get a warning, let's see. Yes, you can see we have the value of y is 6.4. We get a warning because we never used the variable x and the variable z, okay? The variable x is this i32. We can also access single tuple elements directly, access by index. We can have something called 500 code and tup.0, 6.4, these are name of variables by the way, and then we can have let x char, and then we can print all this value. Print ln, let's just leave accessing by index, and then again a cargo run, dash q. We have a warning, but you can see we can have this character 
the X at the end. If we want to print them all, the 500 and the 6 point. Like this, we have all three of them. Tuples are very important in Rust. They provide a really easy way to aggregate some fields. We want to return, I don't know, a character, a number, and uh, a floating point number. In this case, we basically we are sure that we have these multiple values. This is a compound type. We have multiple values in the same one. The array type, this is very important because it's different from other programming languages. So arrays, in Rust, an array is a collection of elements of the same type, okay, but with a fixed length. This is very important because in other programming languages, you can have arrays with a dynamic size. So here, for example, we can define an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is an array of five elements, of course. The sides cannot be altered after the declaration. And this makes them suitable only when we want to create something that doesn't change and uh, insides. If we want to make a dynamic array, we need to use something called vector, but these are like collections and we'll see this in an upcoming lesson. All the types in the array must be of the same type. And of course, we can access the elements in the array in the normal ways. Let's print them. First and second, call go run, and it's here. we can see the number one and number two on position zero and one. We can iterate over elements in an array in different ways, but uh, one, one way is this one for element in our iter and we can print the element. So here we can do for element in R dot iter and we have an iterator for this uh, array. For dynamic collections, when the sites can change, Rust can offer different types of vectors and we need to use another, another type in this case. Custom data types. So we'll see two different types of custom types. The first one is structs. Structs are for when we want to define a structure, as the name. And the interesting fact is that when usually when we define a struct, we can do this inside a function, but usually we want to do this at the top level, out of the scope. I want to have as a struct a person with just a name and an age. They are similar to tuples, but they have named fields. Tuples, they don't have named fields. And as I said, so structs are useful when we want to give a group of values something, but it's very important to give names also to the key that access to the values. For example, here we can do let person equal to person, we have, can have a name and an age, and then we can print the person name and person age. If we have this struct and we want to print, we do cargo run and we have person name is John and age is 25. Last type is enum. You can enumerate different types when we know that something will be on a specific type and they're very powerful and they're very custom. For example, let's make a very simple one, a traffic light. We have a traffic light. Let's say that it can be only red, yellow, and green. We can define a variable called the light and we can assign the traffic light red. Okay, so we are assigning this value to this variable. Now I want to show you something that I am a huge fan of, which is the match statement. Match statement is one of my favorite ones. It's similar to a switch, but I love this uh, very compact syntax. So basically we have this light. I also am a huge fan of this keyword. So match. So the light must match some of these use cases. The key part here for the match statement is that I need to implement all the possible paths for this variable. Okay, let's read. Here we have, at the end, we have this stop. This does mean that we have this traffic light red and we have stop as an output. 